Hello, friends. Welcome to the Millennial Mastermind Podcast. Today's episode is a little bit different. It is a solo episode. Been a while since I've recorded one of these, but had a story that I wanted to share. Now, I'm always getting asked, why did I start a podcast? And this episode dives into really the background of, of where the, the podcast genesis was and why I decided to launch one. Uh, it, this episode actually is the audio from a video. If you're interested in checking out the full video, you can just head over to the Millennial Mastermind podcast Facebook page. That's uh, at facebook.com. Man, words are hard. Facebook.com forward slash millennial mm and you can join our community over there if you're interested in you know meeting some other listeners of the show or just like the page and follow along i try to uh keep things interesting over there so check it out again that's facebook.com forward slash millennial mm all right hope you guys enjoy the episode Hey guys, I wanted to record a quick video to answer a question that I get all the time, and that's, Brad, why the hell did you decide to start a podcast? Well, let's turn the clock back a little bit to a little over four years ago. I had just moved from Chicago to Cleveland with my then girlfriend, now wife, and I had taken a job at this uh, this marketing job at a tree services company of all places, and it was really a great company, um, good values, good people, all of that, but what I realized after a while was that my career and my life just felt like they were stalling. I was driving over an hour every day, each way to and from work on that commute, and I found myself just caught in this routine, just going through the motions. I mean, from the outside, everything looked great. I had a a good job. We were living in a nice apartment downtown. We got a puppy. Things seemed to be going really well, and and they were. Life was good. I was very grateful for everything that I had, the opportunities I was being presented, um, my relationship with my girlfriend's going great, and um, life was good, but in the inside... I knew that something was missing. You see, I I felt like I was not even scratching the surface of my potential. And I felt undervalued, underpaid, and basically just unfulfilled in what I was doing professionally. And the worst part was that I didn't have any plan. I didn't see any route to get to where I wanted to be or to start tapping into that ultimate potential. So I knew I had to start doing something differently. I wanted to start living my potential, creating that life I knew I was capable of, and find my purpose, what I was here to do, what I was meant to be doing. That word purpose scares the crap out of me because, and it did for a long time because I just didn't know what that looked like for me at all. But really there were a few problems to, to get to that point of realizing my potential. And the first was I had no clue where to start. You know, I love this idea of entrepreneurship and business ownership and sounded great, but I had no idea where, what that looked like for me or where to even begin. And also I would never have been able to admit it to myself at the time, but I was afraid, even scared to death of going for something big and failing of it. You know, I was terrified of what people might think of me uh, if I did fail, you know, I'm not just talking about random old college friends on Facebook, um, but even my family and now my wife and like, what would these people think if I had failed at something? Would they think I was a loser? And and don't get me wrong, I'm putting those thoughts from those people in my own head. And that's what we all do. We project our fears from the perception of others because it seems so much more real when in reality, more often than not, those are Just that, our own fears and not the true beliefs of anybody else. But the fear of failure is like a monster in the closet, in a little kid's bedroom closet. Whether or not it's actually there, and more often than not, it's not there, it's scary as shit to you if it's your fear and then that's your closet and your monster in there. So I'm driving to and from work, I've got this hour-long commute each way. So 
I can specifically recall this moment, a real punch in the gut moment when I was making that drive and it was like I was getting hit by a brick when I was faced with my own internal confrontation. I realized that I was really dreading walking into the office that day and spending another day doing something that I was never going to create the desired outcome in my life that I wanted to there. Have you ever felt like this? Sometimes it presents itself as the Sunday scaries. You know, Sunday night, uh, the weekend is over and you realize that you have to go back to work the next day and you're just dreading walking into the office or walking, going into that job that is just soul sucking. And it's just a pit in your stomach. You can almost feel it like a fist size weight just in your stomach holding you down. And, um, it's a very real feeling and and a very real fear. and, And it's not a great place to be. And frankly, it scared the shit out of me. You know, I, I looked around at that company and I saw people who had been there for 10, 20, 30 plus years and were doing the same job. Yeah, sure, the technology around them may have changed, but essentially they're filling the same shoes. They were doing the same role. And I thought of myself, projecting myself out to Brad at, you know, 55 or 60 years old, doing that same thing, sitting in that same cubicle. And it stressed me out, man, making that mediocre salary. No, it just wasn't for me. And I told myself, something has to change. This cannot be the same route that I go down. And actually driving home that day, the same day where I'm driving in, I had that kick in the gut moment where I was just like, oh, this is not it, man. This is not the path. And when I was driving home, it hit me during that same long, boring commute I had uh, time, day over day, you know, I can't even tell you how many thousands of hours I spent in the car that, that, that stretch of that job. But the opportunity had been right in front of my eyes the whole time, or rather I should say in my ears, you see the one really positive thing that came out of that experience in that long commute was that I was introduced during that time to podcasts and I had become addicted. You know, I was listening to them to and from work at least two hours every single day. You know, I got introduced to shows like The Mentee with Jeff Woods and Entrepreneur on Fire with John Lee Dumas, all these different shows uh, about entrepreneurship and personal development. And I was loving it. And finally, I was like, oh my gosh, this commute is not just a waste of time. I can educate myself during it. And, you know, you could try to tell I get really excited talking about podcasts and I get, I was passionate about them. I love listening to them. And the, but the one thing I never found was one that was speaking to somebody directly like me who wasn't an entrepreneur, wasn't sure what their path looked like, but knew that they had that potential in them. and was just trying to figure out what that looked like for them. And I realized, well, shit, why not start one myself? And I started getting really excited about it. You know, I was like, this could be my avenue to creating a business that's going to help me, you know, make my fortune. That's going to help me realize my purpose and create an awesome life for myself, my wife, my family. Uh, And so I got really pumped up. You know, I started looking at those people like the Jeff Woods, the John Lee Dumas, Pat Flynn, all these folks who are just killing the game. And it's like, why not me? I want to do that and I can do that. So that night I get home you know, and I start working on a plan. I Googled how to start a podcast and, you know, I researched what mic I needed, bought one off Amazon, um, found some tutorials to get started, start, start watching just hours and hours of, of content on YouTube of how to get started. And I was, you know, really ready to hit the ground running And then it hit me. The doubt, the questions, the fear. You know, who was I to get behind a microphone and start talking about how to achieve success when I didn't even know what success looked like for me at that point? You know, what was this show supposed to be about? I I wasn't an expert on any given topic. And I had zero podcasting experience. I didn't know you know, how to turn a microphone on for crying out loud, let alone produce a podcast that people are going to spend their time listening to. 
you know, there's all these people out there and the thoughts going through my head is look how many folks are out here with audio engineering capabilities and, and knowledge and they're putting together these awesome podcasts and they have teams and um, a whole people's writing scripts and and they had have, have these networks where they're able to connect with Tony Robbins and Lewis Howes and Tim Ferriss all these people they're bringing in you know the Jeff Bezoses of the world I'm like how am I supposed to compete with that how am I supposed to create something that's going to be valuable to the listeners um, internet articles or not, I had no clue what I was doing. So it was, it was actually paralyzing that fear. And so much so that I stalled for at least three months where I just made excuses of why I couldn't launch. You know, I wasted time with, I spent way too much time on things like creating the artwork for the show or the show descriptions. And sometimes I just found excuses not to do anything at all for a week at a time. All this procrastination because the truth was I was terrified. And I just procrastinated to avoid the fear. But eventually, I got to the point where I was so frustrated with being stuck, being stuck in my career, feeling like I was stuck in my life, and being stuck with this podcasting journey that I had started, this project that I had so much hope for at one point, but just hit a brick wall of fear. And I just got so frustrated that I was faced with a decision. I could either quit, have this be another one of those, you know, grand Brad ideas that I just let go by and never really pursued, never really gave a shot, gave it a shot. Or I could just push past my own bullshit and get started. And so finally I got to that point where I couldn't make any more excuses. And I decided, you know what, let's just give it a shot. And I started taking actions that would make the podcast a reality. Each day I'd figure out, you know, what is the one little piece that I can do today that is actually going to get me closer to launching this thing? And I would just focus on those bite-sized pieces of action. And, you know, I was still scared to death, but breaking it down in those small pieces of action allowed me to start to build some momentum. And I realized that you know what, maybe I'm not an expert, but that's okay because I can interview experts. I can bring people on the show where they're the ones sharing the knowledge. I'm just facilitating the sharing of that knowledge. I'm just asking the questions that I personally am curious about because, you know, this is the stuff I'm interested in. This is the, these are the topics that I was listening to two hours worth of podcasts every day and probably on two times speed. So maybe four hours podcasts, but that's a story for another video. But I realized that, you know, I don't have to be the wise man in the, or the wise person, I should say, in this conversation. I just have to tease out those nuggets of wisdom of the things that I'm personally curious about. So I invite these guests on. You know, I started um, recording them. And before you know it, the first the first episode was live. Then the first 10. Then I was recording episode number 50 with my wife, Callie. Then 100. And now we're at over 165 episodes, which is just crazy to think. But I've gotten to this point and I look back on that journey and I've realized some things that, you know, I never could have predicted would have, would have transpired. Yes, I've been able to create this successful and I should note that success and successful is all in the eyes of the beholder. So there are many ways to determine and define success, but I consider myself the the podcast host of a successful show and I've begun building my business and I've met so many incredible humans, uh, human beings along the way and people who have helped me and have been guests and now business partners and people who have supported me and, and who are now in my corner, which is amazing. And the podcast has been the best personal development uh, platform in my life. This ability to each week have dedicated conversations around these topics that are pushing me to grow and to be better. And um, and I've developed a personal brand, which gotten, has gotten me into rooms and conversations that never would have been possible before. And each passing week, month, and quarter, I get more and more clarity on what my path is, what my direction is, and my purpose here. And that's because I'm taking action, and that's because I'm having these conversations. 
all of that has been amazing. That Those have been very tangible um, results from the podcast that I can look back on it now. And I was like, well, I didn't realize that was going to happen. But what's been probably the most important transformation in my life throughout this journey is that, and one that I didn't set out to accomplish in the beginning, and I had no idea that this was that this is something that I was even working on, but I've been able to address and overcome that deep-seated fear of what other people thought about what I was doing, and that fear of failing. Failing, You see, at some point in this podcasting journey, I realized that I can attract the people into my world and into my life that vibe with me, with my message, with my goals, with the things that get me fired up and get me excited and that the rest of the people out there either don't care, which is probably 95% of them or, or don't matter for the people who do care and don't vibe with it. They've just got nothing better to do. And no, I'm not saying that I'm now immune to this, this fear. I, I still have that and I still battle that, you know, when I'm trying to do new things or I, you know, decide to set a big, Uh, audacious goal for myself. I still have that fear of what other people might think. Um, But now I have a personal track record of overcoming that fear and I can catch myself in that moment quicker. And I can look back on my past and say, Hey, remember you had this same feeling when you were going to launch the podcast. You had this same feeling when you decided to put a course out there about vision and goal setting. You had the same feeling in all these different things that you've attempted to do. And guess what? You did them anyways, and they turned out great. Or maybe they didn't turn out great, but you completed them, and what was the real damage that was done? Maybe a little bit of time spent that you uh, you didn't get the return on that you expected, but you learned something. And having that track record now, I can look back and say, wow, I'm feeling this fear right now, but I have a history, a proven history of fighting through that fear, and everything turned out fine. And so... This isn't just um, in business that this this has affected my life, but in all areas of my life, I can face those fears and really go for it in different things that are important to me and that I want to accomplish. So that is my story and my journey of getting into podcasting. You know, I don't just share this, though, to talk about myself. I wanted to share this story because I want to let you know that you are capable of doing whatever it is that you're afraid of. And maybe that is starting a podcast and creating a brand that can help others change their lives. So there's really just one question that you need to ask yourself if if you do have this desire to launch a podcast or create a business, do whatever it is. And that question is this, what are you waiting for?